Let's get out to our man, Dennis Scott, who is out and ready for the game. D. Scott, I wanted to ask you, with the trade that's going on in Philly, you look at the starting lineup, uh, but one thing steps out to me, stands out to me, and that's J.J. J. J. Redick. He's averaging 18 points. He's shooting 44%, 37% from the three-point line, and he's playing 31 minutes a game, but he's not a starter. Do you think that this will change? Is this the starting lineup that we'll see at the end of the season, D. Scott? It possibly will stick that way, C. Webb, and guys, here's why. They're still trying to figure out Markel folks, keeping him in the starting lineup and keeping him confident. But knowing when you go down the stretch in the fourth quarter, you know J.J. Redick will be on the floor for spacing. And now when you bring in Jimmy Butler, like we showed in the highlights in Charlotte the other night, he will guard the uh, offensive uh, explosive wing guy, and he'll take the big shot. So at the end of the day, I think the Sixers are very happy. The fans are very happy to have Jimmy Butler because he's a two-way guy. But at the end of the night, it's still about Joel Embiid, the big fellow down low. You know, 3D, when you were in Minnesota, uh, you know, last week uh, or, you know, maybe 10 days or so ago, and, you know, you, you were seeing Jimmy Butler – in, in Minnesota. Now you're seeing him in Philadelphia. Can you just talk to us about maybe some of the differences that you're seeing, not from his basketball play, but just in terms of his attitude and his whole feel good about himself? Isaiah, such a great point. After talking to Jimmy Butler before the game, he's talked to LMB, he's talked to Ben Simmons, and all three guys are saying, Play your game. Be who you are. As long as I know you're playing hard every night and as long as I know the bottom line we all want to win, let's be ourselves. And I think that's the biggest part. In Minnesota, I think Jimmy was being himself, but that crew maybe couldn't handle it. I think this crew here in 76 land, uh, Mikhail and Isaiah and uh, C-Web, they understand what Jimmy's all about. And so far, so good. They're off to a great start. Two-part question for you, Dennis. First, you know, is Fultz able to, to uh, get some confidence or keep a little confidence with the role he has? And secondly, has the MVP for Embiid talk started in Philly? Well, no question. I'll go with the latter first. Fans around this city are excited. They hope the big fella can continue to play the way he's playing, get the team back into the playoffs, and obviously go deeper. But the MVP conversation has started for the big fella. As far as folks, I'm going to come back to you guys with this. I'm all about seeing the young man play with some confidence. We know it's so much been made about his shot. I don't see the guy, guys, just out there having fun playing basketball. Maybe if we get that guy back, maybe the free throw and the shooting and everything else falls into place. But how do you have fun coming to work when it doesn't really look like it to me? Thank you so much, D. Scott. We appreciate it. We'll be looking forward to uh, you sticking somebody up at the end of the game, getting our players only interview as only you only. do, D. Scott. Baby. That's players only, up. baby. And don't leave them hanging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, we heard D. Scott talk about it, just kind of uh, the optimism there in 76 in land, and they should have. And, I mean, we've been mm -hmm. watching this process of, of them building and, and uh, kind of developing young talent for a while. But, you know, to you guys, we, we talked a little bit about it, but do you guys see this being the starting lineup with Jimmy Butler coming in? I mean, Butler, he's he's doing his thing. He's out shooting 49% from the field, 39% from threes, and uh, he's averaging 20 points. And, and But since being with this team, he's doing even better. And, Zeke, do you see this being the, the starting lineup and with his role in the, on the team? I, I, I see as time continues to develop, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, and, and the reason why is because the unknown – uh, I think Wilson Chandler is going to play an important part in in this also. Yeah. Uh, so when you got when you got Butler, Chandler, and Simmons out on the floor, and you're talking about you know three guys that can switch, three guys that can you know defend their position, and then they're long, and then they have length, and then those three guys can they can rebound. So you're talking about putting three guys out there together in terms of Chandler. Butler and Simmons, who can rebound and defend, you know, that, that's going to be a, a, a tough combination, I think, for them to break up if they can ever develop chemistry. K-Mac, you know, you, again, you've been a coach, a GM in this. With this type of team, what type of style would you play? Being that Isaiah just said, you can get a stop, you can get a rebound. Mm -hmm. Would you slow it down with a guy like Butler? Would you speed it up? You love big fellas running. Would you come out of and beat? But what should this team's personality be going forward? I'd run every chance we had because I think easy baskets are a premium in the NBA. And Joel Embiid can run. 
and he can get those really, really low seals. But it's simple. If Joel Bede is out, doesn't get the rebound and, outs run it, and is out running ahead of the pack, I'm trying to get that thing inside. I'm telling him, Joel Bede's in front of you. Let's drop it into the big horse and get playing on the side. And if Joel Bede is trailing the play, I say let the wings attack. And you, you, you have almost two different breaks just because he's such a versatile guy. He can step into that late three. But it's all about him. If, if I'm the coach, I'm saying, big fellas in front of you, he's getting the ball. Big <laughs> fellas in back of you, go and play basketball until he gets yeah, there. Yeah, wait for him to get up there. <laughs>